Right, hi there. Uh, thanks for popping over to watch this video. Today I'm going to discuss Dutch buckets, how they work and the pros and cons of the setup itself and how to get yourself going. Now if you haven't watched it already, I have done a build video on um, how you actually build the buckets themselves and how the system works. So it'd be probably worth, if you haven't seen it already or if you don't know, to pop back through my videos and have a look at that one. Um, now let's get on and start and have a look at the system itself. So the system obviously starts with a tank that contains your water and your nutrients. Um, so this is my tank, it's quite a big one, it's a couple hundred litres um, this one holds and um, the whole purpose of this is this is where your um, water starts off and it's where it finishes. Um, and this is also where you're going to add your nutrients and where you're going to pump them out. Now, with a um, tank like this, it's really important that you make sure that it's accessible so that you can get to it. Um, if you took it away under your, um, your buckets themselves, you're going to have problems filling it up, cleaning it and monitoring the level itself. Um, now, um, as to emptying these buckets, um, you can obviously use something simple like, um, you know, uh, buckets themselves or glasses or whatever you want to do. Um, now the best system that I found um, is with one of these pumps. So these pumps are um, normally listed on eBay as uh, petrol transfer pumps um, and they um, run off 12 volts and they've got a small screen filter in the bottom and a motor. Um, I would recommend highly getting one of these because um, it saves you an incredible amount of time when you're actually, there we go, when you're actually emptying the bucket. And you can see the flow rate um, is pretty good there. Um, and like I said before, the actual pump sucks from the base, so you can get nearly every single drop of water out there. Now, the reason that you need to empty it is the actual nutrients themselves get used up and the plants pump in stuff that they don't like, um, so they get rid of some stuff. So your water turns um, a bit nasty. Um, it doesn't turn actually green or anything like that, it just, it's full of all the wrong stuff. So it's important to empty it out. Um, what I normally do with that water is, because it's got a lot of nutrients left, I just use it to water the pot plants in the garden and they do very well off that. Now the actual pump itself um, is a regular um, garden pump, Great pond, um, so you can see that just there. Now these are incredibly cheap, again, eBay purchase, um, and that one cost about £12, um, so very, very cheap. Now to give you an idea of the actual model, it's an IPX8, um, 38 watt, runs off mains voltage, and it's got a maximum height pump of 2.8 meters, um, and that is more than ample for the system that I'm running here. Um, now this, pump then goes up one of these lines and this is regular irrigation hosing so it comes up here and moves along so we'll have a look at that in a second now this other pipe you can see here is the actual return so this is where the nutrient rich water is coming back into the system now I would strongly recommend again that you use flow plast um, push fit connections don't use weld connections because when you come to change the system in the future or when you want to do what I'm doing now and just popping it off, you'll be able to pull them off. If you've welded that on, you're not going to get it off without sawing it off. Um, now, let's pop that back on and go and have a look at the buckets themselves. Right then, so let's have a look at the buckets. Now, let's just ignore these things because these are something completely different, a different kettle of fish that I'll do a video on later. Um, well, I've already done videos on them, but I'll do a, a concise video such as this one about them. Um, and these are magical. Um, similar to a Dutch bucket system but on my own creation. Um, now these are the actual buckets themselves. Um, now I'll show you these ones because these have actually got some plants that I purchased uh, recently in them um, so we can see how the setup works. Now uh, these are mayonnaise buckets. Now to get hold of these buckets they're very easy to buy I think in America um, but they're extremely difficult to get hold of in the UK um, for a good price that is. Now, um, if you go to any large hotel, restaurant, um, or bulk chain that, that, that stocks any kind of sauce that's mayonnaise, I can guarantee you it will come in these big tubs. Um, and they literally, hundreds of them get thrown in the bin. Um, so if you just ask, now it's very important that you ask to make sure that you get the lids as well, um, because they normally throw the lids out. The chefs will normally rip the lids off and then cling it after that, because they get through them quite quick and they don't want to keep ripping the lids off. 
Um, now the tops of these have literally just had a hole saw to cut out the actual uh, hole in the top of the lid and that's where your plant pops through. Um, so let's have a look at one. Uh, let's have a look at this one here because it's not got the plant in it so I can easily take the lid off. So we take the lid off and you can see in here um, we've got this stuff called Hydroton which is an expanded clay. Now you don't have to use Hydroton, you can use uh, perlite, uh, some people use vermiculite, lava rock, um, I think almost any grow medium will work, um, just we don't use soil, we just make sure we use something neutral like uh, stones or you know the polystyrene like um, vermiculite. Um, now that's filled up all the way to the top and the idea is plant your plant in the middle um, and then you have this hose here um, and you can see there there's a nice flow of water coming out of that and that will literally just run over the roots of the plant and the plant will then grow down into the water. Now this runs 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, uh, well as long as you've got the actual system turned on. Um, now this obviously you think well it might get f it's going to get full and overflow and that's the way the Dutch bucket system works. That's the idea, that's what we want it to do. So, if I lift this bucket up, you can see at the bottom here, pull this out, we've got a pipe fitted 90 degree elbow. Um, so the water comes in, fills the actual base up to here, at which point it overflows. At the point in which it overflows, um, let's slip that back in, and go freehand. At the point in which that overflows, you can see it tucks into this pipe in here. Now this is a 32 millimeter um, flow plast pipe. Um, and this is normally used for um, waste sinks um, here in the UK, but any size will work as long as your um, fitting that you use to go into it um, will fit into it, obviously. Um, now, that one goes into there, and then it flows all the way down and back into the pump. Well, back into the tank to be pumped. Um, so you can see it's an extremely simple system. Um, now, if you're going to set this up yourself, these fittings, um, screw fix in the UK, um, and these are um, overflow um, pipe fittings for heating, central heating systems. Um, so they're intended to go on the tank in your attic um, to make sure that if the ball cock stops working, then um, let's get back down quick. So to make sure that if the ball cock stops working, then it overflows outside rather than into your bedroom or whatever it's above. Um, now, um, these are absolutely brilliant. I can't recommend them enough. Um, the benefits of these are incredible. Um, you do not have to water at all. Um, you know, last year um, when I had particularly stressful re weeks at work and um, I was extremely busy, um, I, I think it was one week or one month I didn't come up into the greenhouse for probably two, three weeks um, and everything was absolutely fine. The only downside of them that I found is that the plants grow so well that it's a chore to keep on top of them. So um, when you grow stuff like tomatoes in them, um, they're constantly having to be pinched out um, and make sure they're being trained so that they don't overtake the actual uh, greenhouse itself. Um, now, mine have spaced quite close together. Um, one thing I've learned from that is not to do it again um, this year in terms of the actual plants. So last year, I had tomato next to tomato, next to tomato, next to tomato, and then a row of cucumbers. Um, and they sort of choked each other out when they were fighting for the light. So this year, I'm going to go, well, let's talk about the actual ones that are near now. So that's a cucumber, then a tomato. Then it's gonna go probably a gourd, I imagine, then a tomato, then a melon, then a tomato. <coughs> so that then the actual melons and cucumbers can go up into the, uh, into the roof of the greenhouse um, and the tomatoes can stay um, around the base and the middle of the actual greenhouse itself. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's move on and have a look at the nutrients that we use in the system. Right, before we go on to that, I forgot to show you the actual irrigation system itself. So, um, like I just showed you, these are the pipes that carry the water. Um, this stuff is um, airline hose for not airline as in a plane, I mean airline as in a fish tank. So this is uh, fish tank air hosing um, and I've gone for black. Now the reason I went for black is so that it doesn't get any mould growth in the actual tube in itself. 
that is quite important. You can try and keep everything dark or blocked off from the light so you don't get any algae growth in the actual system itself. Um, that is not something I suffered from at all last year. Um, I didn't take any really major precautions. I just made sure that all the buckets were spray painted black um, and that all the piping was black as well and that the lid was constantly on the actual water tank itself. Now, um, let's slip that back through that hole because that's how the actual pipe gets in there. So there's a small hole at the top here, um, drilled at uh, five millimeters and then the pipe just fits straight through. So it's a four millimeter internal, five millimeter OD outside diameter. Um, now let's go freehand again and have a quick look at the pipe actually that comes from the pump and supplies everything. Uh, we just had a look a moment ago at the actual pump. So the pump is just a regular fish tank, a garden um, fountain pump and that comes up 90 degree angle and then it comes over here. Now it runs all the way along. So you can see there, there's two pipes. The one, the big one here is the return pipe itself. So that one there is the actual irrigation hose that carries the water to the system and that is the return. So that's the archery and that's the vein. Remember, the vein always carries it back to the heart. You may remember that because vein has got the word in in it so it goes into the heart um, now um, you can see it goes all the way along and these just cut plumbed off them and go into each bucket itself so this system with that pump i just described is supplying one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen buckets plus this system which runs off the same one but is slightly different so we won't talk about that one now the way this system works is you use one of these um, which is incredibly handy um, this one's got a bit rusty but it's got a punch on the end um, and you get your um, fitting that you want to use these you can see there they have got little barbs on the end so the idea is you punch a hole in that irrigation hosing and then you insert this and they are incredibly hard to insert when it's cold so if you've got a small blowtorch it's very handy just to warm the pipe up and then these actually slot into there and you can use the other end to push it in you can see here it's got a long line up so the idea would be that you would have your hose with this fitting on the end and then you would slip the whole lot into there and then use the tool itself to force it in. Um, now these are a bit hit and miss so I would recommend that you get some leak stop um, like a silicon sealant it is um, that you get from most plumbing stores this for external plumbing that can stop leaks um, even when it's running it works so that's very handy to use. Um, now you can see at the backs um, I've got that on quite a few of the joints themselves so you can see that um, white stuff around the base there. Um, if we actually have a look at one of the plants itself, so you can see there it's just coming over and just trickling nicely. Right now we've had a look at the system let's talk about the nutrients that go in. So obviously you can't just grow plants on plain water and you need to make sure there's nutrients in the water. So the one I use is Dutch Pro and it comes in two different forms um, so you get a bloom and a grow. So the grow uh, nutrients you use when the actual plants grow in itself so it's got all the right mixture for that and then when the plants start blooming flowering and fruiting you can move over to a um, you move over to the to the bloom called nutrients um, now the um, these Dutch Pro ones they're the only two that I use you can get um, an extra one called explode um, which I think quite a few different brands do which you put in that then gives the, the uh, whatever you grow in a massive burst of energy to to really pump the fruits out now um, I haven't tried that yet myself so I can't recommend it, the feedback's really good um, and it probably is worth, an worth looking into but uh, last year I didn't use it, I just used literally grow and bloom and everything was absolutely fine. I might have got a better yield but I'll be honest with you because the Dutch bucket system is so good at what it does I struggle to even eat the actual tomatoes and um, cucumbers and stuff I grew in it anyway. So I probably wouldn't want to waste the money on it because although I get increased yields, I'll probably get increased wastage. So let's have a quick look. Um, quite big, the containers I've got. Um, so this is the grow and you can see it's got a big A on it. So they always come in a mixture of different uh, nutrient bottles that you then top the water up with. Now there's no point discussing volumes that you put in 
because that will vary between the brand you purchase. Um, so with the grow, you get an A and you also get a B. So um, with these um, buckets, uh, with these buckets, with these totes, you literally just read the back and it tells you how much to put in for your volume of water. Um, and then you can judge yourself um, how long that's going to last in your system, depending on how big your water tank is and what kind of actual plants and vegetables you're using. Now, um, so I'm just looking off the screen because my neighbor's staring at me. Um, right then, start again after the neighbor's staring at me. Uh, lost track there. So obviously um, how much nutrients you use is gonna be dependent on how many plants you've got in the system and how nutrient hungry they are. Um, now the professionals, which I don't call myself, uh, use PPM meters and pH meters to make sure that the water is the correct pH level um, and that they have the right parts per mill. Um, probably better to look at someone else's video for that, I'm no expert on it. Now because I'm not an expert and the reason I'm not an expert is I didn't bother with that last year, I just literally threw in the volume that it recommended and I judged myself when I thought the plants needed some extra nutrient bursts and the way I did that was by literally just looking at the leaves and looking at the flower production and it's quite easy to tell visually when it needs a top up. Um, like I say with the Dutch bucket system because it works so well um, it does affect, I'm more than, more than certain it affects the actual um, volume of fruit you get but because there's so much it's, it's negligible unless you're going for massive yields and you need every single one um, I wouldn't say that it's something you need to invest in um, although they are quite cheap if you buy the very cheap eBay versions. Um, so my overall feelings of the system is that it's extremely good. Um, you know, the positives of not having to water, of being able to leave it for weeks on its own and it manages to sustain itself. Um, and um, the once it's set up, the absolute just, you know, I've said it three or four times just then, the ease of the system um, is really beneficial. And it's something that I would highly recommend setting up yourself and investing in. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and um, come back and have a look at some more videos and we'll see how this system does this year. Okay, thanks. Bye. Remember.